while to eat. And then as soon as you're, you fall asleep and you go into stage two sleep, then we turn off the heat. So it's not on continuously. It's only on to, to help you fall asleep. Uh, and then, as, as I said, and there, this is what a typical night looks like in terms of your sleep cycles as you're going through the different stages of sleep. Um, you go down into that deep sleep, and as I said, in the beginning of the night, you're going to spend more time in your deep sleep. And then towards the end of the night, you're going to spend more time in your, in your REM sleep. And if I wake you up when you're in deep sleep or stage three or four sleep, you are going to be very groggy, very disoriented, and essentially you can defeat the whole purpose of, of a nap if you wake somebody up in the middle of that deep sleep. So we don't want to wake them up in the middle of deep sleep. If I wake you up in the middle of a dreaming cycle, you can be disoriented and you can have sort of strange hallucinations and visions that are essentially, you're still, your brain is still dreaming, but your eyes are open. So it's, it, we, we want to wake you up more at the end of a REM cycle. That's the ideal time to wake up. But if you only have 20 minutes or 30 minutes for a nap, then we, what we want to do with our device is to keep you from getting into that deep sleep period at all. We just want to get you into a good stage two and keep you there until you're ready to, to awaken. So what the, nap, what the Somnio does, what it's designed to do, is to monitor the, your sleep stages. And if it, if it senses that you are get, going into a deep sleep and you only are, have programmed a short nap period, it's going to just gradually bring you up a layer. Uh, so that you don't go into that dip and we don't have to wake you up at that point. So the idea would be for a 30 minute nap, which is a very common uh, midday nap period that people have, uh, we would just get you into stage two as quickly as possible and then about five minutes before your programmed awakening time, we'll start to bring you up through a variety of sounds and the blue light. And the blue light has been shown to combat that, that sense of inertia, that grogginess, that heaviness um, that can be associated, especially with daytime napping. So the other thing that we are doing, and hopefully this will be of interest to you because we do hope that some of you are future users of this system, is that we're recording each one of the nap periods that, that you've done with the nap cap or the somnio. And we're then, we can then compare over time the efficiency of your napping. Because we want to, we, part of what we want this device to do is to change the way your brain approaches napping um, and to consistently put your brain into a state that allows you to get a nap at any point in time and maximize that nap. So we want to track your progress over time. At some point, you won't need the device anymore. Yes? So you mentioned uploading this data. Are you going to have an API? An API, sure, yeah, sure, absolutely, yeah. In fact, all of our systems um, have a full software developer's kit. I mean, our philosophy is we're developing a lot of different sensor systems, and we build a lot of software and apps to run on top of them, but we want everything to be as open as possible, and we want all of you to build the next generation devices or analysis tools or, you know, on top of our platform, so. Uh, and it will all be on a mobile device. Uh, our devices communicate with the Android tablet right now. Um, we're working on the, the Apple at this point. We'll get there. Oh, I just forgot to mention, so a new scientist will be doing an article on this whole project and product um, shortly. Uh, now, I'm going to just quickly jump to uh, the accelerated learning that I talked about. Um, this, again, was a, was a project that originated from some of our work with the Marines as well as with the Navy. And uh, what the Marines wanted us to do is to characterize a, a pre-shot peak performance state for marksmanship training. So what we did was we took uh, a whole group of expert Marines who were actually the coaches for uh, marksmanship, and we monitored their brain and their heart while they were shooting. Um, both at still targets as well as uh, and, and out on the range uh, in a variety of environments as well as with moving targets. And we found that experts consistently went into a particular heart and brain state just prior to taking a perfect shot. Uh, they had a heart rate deceleration and along with that we saw a characteristic brain state with 
increase in alpha activity over the left temporal parietal region with an increase in, in midline theta. Uh, and those are just EEG frequencies, and I know somebody's going to talk about EEG neurofeedback later today, so I'm, I'm not going to belabor those points. But the, the way we structured the study was we wanted to identify what was characteristic of an expert. And then, and, and what was fascinating about the experts is that even if they just closed their eyes and imagined shooting, you'd see exactly the same state, consistently like clockwork. Uh, and when, they, when that state was not present, even for the experts, the shots weren't perfect. So it was a pretty nice uh, established way to establish the psychophysiological profile of pre-shot performance. So then what we did is we took 300 novices and also a group of intermediate shooters from the Marines, uh, 300 novices that were half Marines and half civilians, and we trained them first in the lab to just reproduce that expert state. So we just trained them to control their heart, which everybody can do, and then we tra trained them to control their brain and, and reproduce that expert state before they ever picked up the rifle. Then after they did the, the psychophysiological feedback training, then we had them go through the standard rifle training, and we found that we were able to accelerate marksmanship skill training by a factor of 2.5. So it's a very dramatic increase just by training people to recognize, to go into that expert state and recognize when they were in that expert state. Now we've just, uh, tested this for archery, uh, and we're working on a, a golf protocol as well. Um, and basically, it's, again, it's a very, very simple device. Now what we've been able to do with this device and this sort of peak performance profile is put it into an active gaming environment too, so that not only are you training your heart and brain to go into this expert state, but you're doing it in a very active video gaming environment. Uh, we were invited to, to present that game at uh, the Google I.O. conference, and we, had, we even had Sergey Graham hooked up and, and running the NeuroSword game. So that's pretty exciting for us. So we see lots and lots of potential for this. It's a very easy to use system. It can be used in any environment. Um, we're doing some studies with autism at home. Uh, uh, we're doing a lot of studies out, you know, in challenging environments, and, and this system is very portable and mobile. It can be taken anywhere. So our approach to this, and oh, we're going to be profiled on through the wormhole um, in a couple months. So we, we were already filmed the show, and uh, he, we focused quite a bit on this accelerated learning protocol. Um, and, and our approach to this has been to. Uh, start with experts and profile the experts, the psychophysiology of experts. And we've done this in a variety of domains in addition to uh, rifle shooting and archery and golf where we've looked at expert chemists and we've looked at uh, expert summer, submarine piloting teams. Uh, and just recently we did a study of uh, teaming at the Asadi Business School in Barcelona where we looked at uh, expert decision making among team members. And we're able to come up with a neuro profile of what an expert team looks like versus a novice team or an intermediate team. So, so we see lots and lots of potential for these types of uh, analysis activities and then giving people real time feedback during a teaming exercise so that if a, teaming is, a team is going in the wrong direction, we can reorganize them and hopefully get them back on the right path. And I'll just talk very briefly, uh, again, as I said, with, with Marines, we were asked to come up with some, some protocols or some approaches to address the issues of sleep deprivation. And one of the ones that we used was giving them supplements of omega-3 fatty acids uh, and found that that alone, um, in, in two large sleep deprivation studies, in one study it was full chronic sleep deprivation, they were up for 48 hours, in another study, it was much more realistic where they were performing their daily tasks, but they were in a training exercise that, that only allowed them to get four to five hours of sleep per night. And what we found is that by administering omega-3 fatty acids in, in reasonably high doses, but not high enough so that you would have any issues with, like, there's some issues with you know, excessive uh, blood thing, but the doses weren't that high. Uh, what we found is that we were able to mitigate the effects of the sleep deprivation through the nutritional supplement. And we were able to show that by 
Yes. What, what, what doses were you using? Uh, 600, 600 milligrams. Of, of uh, DHA or? We have it on there. <laughs> I don't have it on there. No, we, we can, Rob, can you look at the exact, because we have the, the published paper. This is not, um, it's one of my colleagues, Dr. Robin Johnson was the PI on this. And, okay, so interestingly, we were doing the blood level, we were monitoring blood levels, and what we found is that we, we even though we started pretreatment six weeks prior to the study, we, for the most part, did not get most of the Marines up to an optimal level. Um, so we probably should have either pretreated longer or given them higher doses. Uh, but we were playing it very safe on the, on the doses. I think it's 600 pounds. It? Yes. Three minute warning. Okay. Okay. So, but we can get you all the information on this, and also we're happy to talk about the study. Um, but what we showed was that we were they were able to maintain their cognitive performance on memory tasks, vigilance tasks, uh, for much longer periods of time with the pretreatment with omega threes. And and the study that we're now uh, we proposed, and we think the dark is going to fund next, is combining our facilitated napping with optimal dosing of omega-3s and looking at long-term performance effects over time. We really think that there's, there's tremendous synergies between we can do neurofeedback training plus optimizing the nutritional state uh, and just giving the military some of this knowledge that napping at appropriate times is a, is a good thing and will sustain the troops for longer periods of time uh, that we can have a positive impact. So that's, that's pretty much it. I had a lot of points, and there's a lot of details on the website, and, and come and interact with our technology and, and give us your input. Yes? What's the commercial availability of any of these products? Yeah, so this, the, the Somnio um, is, is still, it's a, we have 10 working prototypes. And, and, and right now, what we're trying to do is find a way to manufacture it really inexpensively um, so that we can, you know, market it to consumers because we'd like to we'd like to price it at about two hundred dollars uh, and at the moment that's it costs a little bit more to make so, so it's going to take a little bit of time to get to that next level but but all of the work that's done in terms of prototyping it's really a manufacturing issue um, the adaptive peak performance trainer is also we, we built we built 50 pr prototypes for all of the studies and again we're so we just started sort of that one we have worked out that we can mass produce it, and, and it's a matter of you know what's the target market, you know how much are people willing to pay to get this the brain monitor, and what are the features and functions that everybody wants. So so that one's really close too. Yes. It seems like the devices get people in the zone. Um, yes. So do you have something for writers block? <laughs> <laughs> ah. Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I think that one requires a combination of psychophysiology plus some cognitive therapy, because there are some cognitive suggestions that you need to override, and, and we can give you, we can put you in the state that is going to facilitate those cognitive suggestions. Thank you very much.